How important is renter's insurance when you don't own much? A common misconception about renter's insurance is that it's meant for people who own a lots of expensive things. That's not true. A tenant policy also includes liability coverage, which will cover someone falling of getting hurt in your apartment. Say you have a get-together, or apartment warming. Maybe a board game night. Well, as your guest is walking towards the door, they slip and fall. Your tenant insurance would kick in and that person could claim against your policy. It offers an extra layer of protection to you and the property owner, who will all surely be named on a lawsuit. Similarly, most personal liability coverage listed on a tenant policy cover additional incidents that may happen outside of the apartment for instance, a pet dog biting someone at the park. Next, a tenant policy affords you some coverage under, loss of use, to find a place to stay, after a covered loss fire and theft, being the most common, flood is usually excluded on all policies and requires a separate flood policy, and earthquake coverage is extra on most policies. That would afford you a place to stay after someone happens to your apartment, be it a hotel or something of the sort. Normally, given the urgency of finding a place to stay, and the time it takes to get to the hands of a claims adjuster, you'd likely have to pay out of pocket and submit receipts for reimbursement. Back to the initial thought about why it may not be necessary the amount of stuff you own. A lot of people don't realize how much they actually own, until they have to replace it, Policies I sell are normally for at $20,000 in personal content coverage, and everyone likes to fight me on the amount saying they don't have that much stuff. First off, the difference between $10,000 and $20,000 in content coverage is minimal, usually under $10 a year. But most importantly, think of the price of everything you have to replace in the event of a fire. Even at the minimum, two to three pairs of shoes, $150, modern TV, $250 minus 300, clothes, jackets, $400, mattress, $500, bed, dresser, nightstand, $600, table and chairs, 300, laptop, 450 and those are all extremely low numbers. In the event of a total fire loss, you have to replace everything, down to your socks and underwear, toothbrushes, shampoo, every piece of electronic and houseware tablet, coffee maker, toaster, etc. Those numbers add up really quickly. If you have children their things including toys, go included in the above calculations, and anyone else that lives with you. Most insurance policies that I've dealt with have an endorsement or already include an amount that can be paid out to you for loss of money in cash, that might be in a piggy bank or wallet at home. As a final point, if you own an insurance a car, ask that company to give you a quote for renter's insurance. They'll normally be able to apply a discount to your car insurance and the price of the renter's policy may be non-existent after the discount to your car insurance, or at least, it'll be lower. Tenant policies tend to start at about $6 minus 7 a month, however there is usually a monthly payment fee, so I suggest paying it in full, if possible or going on automatic draft payments, which generally lower the monthly service fee amount from $5 minus 6 to $1 minus 3. Edit. Keep in mind tenant policies also have a deductible, which is the amount you're will to put out of pocket, in the event of a covered incident, before the insurance company will pay out. So even though a higher deductible will make your price lower, try to opt for something with a deductible you will be okay covering in the event of a total loss. Even if you don't own much, I have a one-word answer for you, liability. Renter's insurance is very important. For example, in California landlords can require a tenant to have liability insurance, which is typically included in a renter's insurance policy. So assuming you get a decent renter's insurance policy, not only will your own possessions be covered, so will your liability for damages caused to others. Furthermore, a renter's insurance policy should help cover the costs of a hotel stay if your apartment becomes uninhabitable due to a fire or flood etc. Renter's insurance is also very cheap. If you get more than one kind of insurance from the same carrier company, you usually get discounted rates. I strongly recommend that you contact whoever you get your car insurance from, or whatever insurance you have, to see what the rates are, you will probably be pleasantly surprised. There are three parts to renter's insurance. One part ensures the value of your possessions in the unit. 
Another part pays your living expenses if the unit is temporarily unavailable. The third part provides liability insurance for anything that happens in the unit. A renter friend of mine had an accidental kitchen fire. He lost almost nothing in terms of personal property, but his renter's insurance paid for the damage done to the landlord's property and equipment, who otherwise could would have sued him for the amount, and the rental on a condo during the two months it took to make the home livable again. One of the most expensive parts of almost any fire is smoke damage. You would be amazed how much that affects how quickly. So how much personal property you own is the last reason to buy renter's insurance. The other reasons are absolutely critical. Let me give you a scenario. You live in a second floor walk up. You leave something on the stairs, and a guest or family member trips over it and falls down the stairs. That is your negligence, and you can be sued and held responsible. If you have renter's insurance, you are covered to your policy limits, and your friend and loved one gets some of their medical expenses covered. Scenario 2. You leave the stove on and leave the kitchen. A fire starts, but the landlord's fire alarm alerts you so you get out alive and catch the fire early enough to save the unit. Your renter's insurance will do two things. Since it was your negligence, they pay the damages. And since the unit will be temporarily unlivable due to your action, the renter's insurance will help pay for your temporary living expenses while the unit is repaired, or help you relocate. In addition to the above protections, you probably own more than you think. If you lost everything today, even at used prices, could you afford furniture, clothing, electronics, bedding, curtains, linens, kitchen tools, plates, silverware etc. Less than $20 a month is a pretty good investment for that protection no?